to some, it will look as if this university has no students, as there are so few graduating. But let me assure you, those who are here are those who could come. Being a virtual university, many, many of our students are not living even in Uganda. They're living all over the world, and we could not ask them to fly in just for half an hour graduation. Thanks to those who have made it, you're most welcome. Slowly, e-learning is becoming more and more accepted, and people ask more and more questions about it. The world is changing, and there is no major university in the world anymore which has not embraced e-learning by setting up an e-learning department or even turning the whole institution completely virtual. VUU does not want to miss this opportunity and wishes to be an actor of national and international repute, promoting quality for an effective higher education. In 2011, on the 26th of September, the National Council for Higher Education granted this young institution its provisional license, with the objective to offer postgraduate ex education exclusively online. It was a leap of faith both of the National Council and of ourselves. The first students joined the university in 2012 to add other specializations to the MBA, namely hospitality studies and tourism management. To reach this stage, we had to ensure that our students would receive the best possible materials. And our teaching platform, Moodle, is certainly a most user-friendly place where students and staff can interact constantly. A library <coughs> with some 50 million resources has been put in place. And staff and students, as well as the general public, can assess it freely 24-7. in the materials offered. The various courses are reviewed after each academic year so as to ensure that the latest information is embedded into these materials. Students are thus assured to be at the forefront of their subject and will always have the best available sources at their disposal. VU does not want to work in isolation and to share its knowledge with other institutions, VU works in hand in hand with the Research Educational Network for Uganda, RENU, to constantly improve the techniques used and thus reach an ever growing audience. VU is in the process of setting up with RENU a network of willing universities in Uganda which will share their materials and academics so as to bring the best possible to students of various institutions. This project will eventually, we hope, reach outside our borders and give to Uganda the aura of quality higher education. Madam Chancellor, the Belgian Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, many people have supported us over the years and it's not possible to mention them all here. But I have to thank in a special way the National Council for Higher Education, which in 2011 granted us our first license. The university will hand out an honorary degree, namely an honorary Master of Philosophy. One person not known to many, I'm sure, but certainly well known in his profession, have had the courage to join us in this adventure. Thank you and my most sincere congratulations on your achievements. Your families, employers, and many others have supported you. I hope that few of you did not disappoint you. Go into the world and be our ambassadors. We need your support. Once you have graduated, you will also officially become members of the VU Alumni Association. A register will be made available for this. I conclude by once again thanking you for all you did to help us and for simply being here today. 
we pledge that we will continue to offer the best we can so as to make VU a first-class rated institution for the good and growth of our people and our nation. I thank you. The Belgian government is so far not involved in this project, uh, but it is important to note that our Belgian Minister of uh, Development Cooperation, one of his uh, main priorities is actually a digitalization. Uh, also in the different development uh, cooperation programs uh, worldwide, he wants to uh, uh, he, he emphasizes very strongly the, the importance and the need to make the match. Maybe sometimes we didn't have enough sense of initiative against <laughs> Wales. I know there is somebody from Wales there who is very happy. But <laughs> so sometimes we lack some initiative during the match, but I would say this is rather exception than the rule. And uh, the event today uh, shows that very clearly. Um, so I'm very. As I said before, I'm very honored, very proud that uh, this university has been set up. Uh, and I'm also uh, very proud of the students uh, who today uh, uh, are being, uh, it's a second graduation, so we are in the batch of the second graduation. So, challenging and successful effort to build a platform that is trans border, transnational, trans ethnic, and trans in many ways to deliver quality education. We underline that word, quality education, in a continent, in a region that is crying out for that kind of education. As people who are walking this path ahead of many others, we are the first uh, undertaking of this type. The strategic challenges have been considerable. The regulator the National Council of Higher Education, in some ways, is, right, is, is learning from our experience here on how to raise a child of this kind. We represent, at the moment, the frontiers of higher education, but also really the future of higher education. It is difficult to get engaged with the news these days without hearing something about virtual this and that. Well, yesterday, I think you were all hearing with some amazement about the first federal accident. Focus very much on the strategic developments in the field of higher education. And Michelle and Dee saw six years ago the fact that after many years, both of them engaged as vice chancellors and regulators and so on in higher education, that the future of higher education and research lies in engaging with digital platforms, with virtualization, with offering a resource that cuts across borders. We've got excellent professors from Ireland, from Belgium, from the United States, making inquiries, students, and so on. And we believe that our offerings within our strategic framework are going to be rolled out to embrace uh, other aspects of, of, of education, especially at the lower end, where there's a lot of need, but we just don't have the quality in the region. And we think this platform might offer. At the moment, we focus very much on self-test learning, people who are mature enough to be able to pick their way through what might look like a big forest, but with guidance from our staff, and that's, and that's, that's a good thing. And so, at the risk of telling a story that never ends, you know, football matches end up there. Yeah, we don't think we'll have vice-chancellor-less universities, but you never know. <laughs> we, we may soon have a vehicle running around the platform on which there are no vice uh, But we, we think that the patient work at our staff, the university secretary, I shouldn't forget that. Even the regulator, we had uh, a visit, a visitation recently, looking into embracing online PhD programs. We think this is an important area for Uganda, and uh, we think that what this means for future for the future of higher education, right across this technology, they can do many exciting things. And if we do not embrace online education, virtual education. We are going to lose these people. And this bulge is a great opportunity. The Chinese have made something of it. And I think this continent is going to be looking to universities of this kind to really get things out there. Give depth to people, not just being on the internet. You know, you can chat, you can be on social media. This is not about social media. This is about 
the intellect engaging and in, in a selective, in a disciplined way with the facts around us and coming up with solutions to problems that we face day to day. Many of those solutions are always going to have a digital component. And so the sooner we are exposed to platforms that always have a digital delivery mechanism in sight, the better for everybody. And so thank you all for coming. Our dear graduates, thank you. Um, thank you very much to the, the Chair of Council. I would now like to invite him before he escapes. I would like to invite you as our Chancellor to come and preside over, to make your remarks and preside over graduation. Thank you. The University wants to set examples for our society. We need to be part of the process of instilling these values in our society. And for this reason, the University Council has recommended that a person of integrity, professionalism, and keen on transparent work be recognized. An honorary Master of Philosophy will be awarded today to Mr. Ahmad. It's no sufficient reason to claim that we cannot be part of this move forward. We want to tell the world that we are fully part of it and want to contribute a little something to make it a place where it is good to be. E-learning has become in our world of today a buzzword, and we as Ugandans still have to embrace it fully. There are so many constraints in higher education, let alone finances and resources, that virtual teaching must be brought on board as a unique tool to bring high quality education to all those who wish it. We should all be advocates for e-learning in the country and help institutions of higher learning move forward and improve constantly in the quality of their staff and academic materials. What Virtual University has achieved until now is an example which I think should be emulated. I call on all colleagues from other universities to join this effort and make it one, common, one for the common good to which we are dedicated. Dear graduates, completing university studies at the level that you have reached is a success. When Virtual University was first set up, we did not know what the future would be. We did not even know if students would join us. You have been our strength, and I have to make this happen. We appeal to government to consider seriously reviewing their support to institutions of higher learning and considering it an, an obligation they have towards their people and country to give higher education at all levels all the support it needs and deserves. Be it private or public, both are working for the common good and there is no sufficient reason to make a distinction between the way higher education is supported. Allow me to conclude these few remarks by reiterating my thanks to the promoters of Virtual University of the Virtual University of Uganda project. What they have done will be written down in golden letters. Abdul Karim Ibrahim Mohalim Hussein. Adiero. By the powers invested in me, I award the Certificate in Project Management of Virtual University of Uganda to those candidates whose names have been read. Madam Sanchala, I present you the following candidate for the award of the Post Uganda. Akena Christine Akidi. She is unfortunately interested in me. I award the postgraduate diploma in international development of Virtual University of Uganda to the candidate whose name has been read. Bienumi Frederick. Invested in me, I award the postgraduate diploma in public health of Virtual University of Uganda to 
the candidate whose name has been raised. Justin Deno Oboya. Ochaya Hadi Victor. Olore. Born on the 1st of September 1937 in Mombasa, his father and mother had one boy and two daughters. When he moved to Standard 7 at the Chikowani Primary School and passed PLE. He did well and went to Alidina Vishram High School 4 in 54, <coughs> thus <coughs> the completing and monthly salaries. We should note here that all this work was done manually, 